by your home for a lifetime. A company dedicated to empowering you to stay safely, independently, and comfortably in your own home. And now here is your host, Rad Gantos. Good afternoon, everybody. If you're watching us on YouTube, you will see your eyes are not deceiving you. This is not reversey world. I am not sitting in the normal place that I'm sitting uh, in. Reversey because world? Reversey world. Bizarro world? Bizarro world. Yeah. Okay. First of all, Paul, would you find me some sort of really sad requiem music, please? Sad requiem. Yes, I, I will. I, I need I need some sad requiem music for an announcement later. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, no, no, no. I need it for an announcement later. We'll okay. do it right after the break. There, there was we had a death this week. Oh. And I want to just take a moment and, oh. and acknowledge the the impact and and uh, on my life by this particular thing and okay. uh, this person and uh, that I'm really I was really sad to hear about their uh, their passing. Okay, and I'm going to leave it at that until we come back from the break. Okay. And everybody in the in the studio is looking at me very, with very sad eyes. Yeah. So I'm not going to say anything until here. the break. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. If you do know what I'm talking about, though, and you're listening, please text, uh, uh, tweet us and let us know what you think I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> with that being said, who the heck is he talking? Uh, about? I am sitting on the wrong side of the table today because uh -huh. I have a full studio of three guests. And this way I get to see all of them instead of having to turn my head to look at one and turn. So they're all sitting in front of me. And two of them are return guests, Hanny and Kathy. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Kathy's busy with her selfies. <laughs> no live Facebook. She'll, she'll join us Facebook at some live. point. At some point of the show, she Kathy will join us. Right? She'll, she'll come in. Okay. Oh, she's, she's here. She's hiding behind her phone. But okay, so she's to be, yeah. So, what the heck is the deal with selfies, by the way? Okay, we live in a world of selfies. Okay, the world around us has changed. Hasn't it changed? Okay, I mean, I mean, I think. Did your parents basically take selfies? There was no even phones. Oh, did they have cameras? I mean, I don't. Did they have this old camera? Right. Which our like parents you, had you, you, this you used long to develop. Long you used to develop film. Yes, and it take okay. a week. To take get a week. Picture. Right. We used to like send letters. Oh, that's that's crazy. Right. Yeah. Okay. The world around us has oh, changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To the better, to the worse. Do we know? I, sometimes I, I, to the better. I sometimes to the worse. That's it. Sometimes yes. Sometimes You were waiting the whole week or whole month to process because you were taking only few pictures. You were not taking like. Million See, I figured if we start post. talking about the photos, she will join the show. Yeah. That's right. You <laughs> and, see? She, and she did. Okay. But the, the point is, the point is the world around has changed. It is not the same way, you know, it used to be. I, I, I think it's really funny that Chevy, wasn't it Chevy, Paul, that came up with the ad, it's not your father's, uh, oh no, Oldsmobile. Not came up with, you know, it's not your father's yeah, Oldsmobile. There right. was an ad that he says, this is not my fa your father's Oldsmobile. And the appeal was that Oldsmobile was considered to be an old product, an old brand, and then basically trying to reposition it by reintroducing it, the line differently, mm -hmm. and they literally said, this is not your father's Oldsmobile. Right. Well, guess what? Today in the care business, it's not your father's Oldsmobile. It's not wow. your father's care business. Wow. Anyway, right? So go. you were wondering, you right? You were right. wondering. You know you were wondering how I was going to tie it in. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out who died. That, uh... No, you'll find it. You'll find <laughs> out. You'll find out, and I think you will basically at that point join me in the eulogy. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right here. Okay. Okay. But really... Uh, the industry that these three, Agnes yeah. Sinclair is our third guest on the show. Agnes, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, uh, she's, she's thinking, what the heck did I get myself yeah. into? These, these two know. Okay. <laughs> she would discover <laughs> in a okay. few minutes. Th that's why they were laughing, Agnes, right. when we were walking you know over. Last yeah. night, they were just asking me, are you going to be on the radio show with this? I was like, really? You know, I uh, had nothing yeah. to prepare. No, no we, we have a standing standing agreement with anybody that's a guest on the show. Once they have been through the, 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 the gauntlet of the show, yeah. they have to bring us new sacrificial new, guests. <laughs> new blood. So here we go. Oh, Agnes. Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank so, you so, 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 so that, that's why, they're, that's okay. why they okay, were giggling as we were walking over. They know okay. what's coming. That's right. right. Yesterday so, when I told her that tomorrow morning or noon there would be a live show and you would be on that, she said, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. What yeah. I, I said, and what did you say, Hanny? I said, no, keep it a surprise. We have somebody huh. who will just manage to do everything. Don't worry. It will go easy. 
Yeah, I right? don't know where I'm going to take you, but follow the leader. Let's yeah, see. Right, right. <laughs> see where it goes. Still right. until now, I have no idea you have no what idea. you're going to talk yes, about. Yes, you do. You, we talked we, a little we, we bit. Mistaken, we mistaken that the show is going to stress what? At 1 o'clock? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah the, the, the thing started off with them thinking that the show starts at 1. Oh, that yeah. was foolish. And they're hanging out, having coffee, eating cookies. And I'm like, no, no, that's at 1 o'clock. After the show's over, you get your cookies. Not at That 12. was part of the conspiracy. That was way. part of the conspiracy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just oh, okay. want to. Right. have to eat something. <laughs> So, so, so if you if anybody's listening to the show and still on at this point, let me clarify what we're talking about. Okay. Us, yeah. So, so these these two ladies and gentlemen are involved in the senior care industry, in different capacities, uh, but basically they are all involved in a way that I thought was interesting, especially given the last conversation we had with Annie and Kathy when they were on the show is that basically we are dealing with a changing nature of this industry. The incoming guest client profile is different. It is your grandfather or father's senior care industry. The, did you know that the average age of people in that are, let me, let me rephrase that, the, high, the diversity matrix of population in Orange County has changed. It used to be that 80% of the population was white. Now about 48% of the population is white. Second largest group is Latinos. Third largest group is Asians. Uh, and in that configuration, the average or the median age of a foreign-born Orange County resident, citizen, is 48 years old. Okay? Nat uh, uh, Native-born, which could be an also second-generation immigrant, okay, Native born is thirty. That's the medium age. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you figure you figure, and, I, and and maybe the math doesn't work exactly right on the second and on the second generation immigrant. But the point is this: you have an aging population. There was an article in the Orange County Register about a year ago that talked about the the, the per capita population in terms of seniors in Orange County is the largest in the country. Not Florida, mm -hmm. Orange County. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that in Orange County, the largest concentration of that is South County. Okay, so with that being said, and with what we just talked about about diversity, changing diversity matrix of, of the county, and we are, I would say, more probably more white, if you will, but then other areas like Santa Ana, Garden Grove, you know, there's other areas that even more of an ethnic uh, matrix, right? Also, the country as a large, as a whole is also experiencing this, right? So, with that being said, we have we have a situation that is different in how we provide services. Period, and when and that does not mean any difference when it comes to senior care or care. Period. Okay, somebody was telling me that there was, I think, something like sixty-two countries citizens that were in working in the World Trade Centers. When 9/11 hit, I think more even. Okay, more. And those and those are those yep. are people that basically have different beliefs, yep. different ways of practicing religion, different different nutritional habits, okay, spirituality, ethnicity, different sense of comfort when it comes to personal space, different maybe practices of hygiene. If you're a Muslim, you're based and and you're and you're a devout or 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 practicing Muslim. Or a Catholic, you may have certain rituals that you basically do. And Muslims, you know, cleaning before you clean yourself before you have, you know, you have prayers. Right. If you're praying five times, five times a day, you know, how does this translate into a facility that actually is now trying to accommodate your needs as you get older? I don't know. You guys tell me, but I think to a greater extent, we're still trying to do a one size fits all when it comes to this. And, 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 and unless you are innovative, like with Ag Agnes, <laughs> uh, you know. I'm, so uh, the, I think, you know, this, okay, the me, aging population is. Let is, me stop you, Agnes, right. just for one thing. Let's give people, again, the websites, because I want people to follow. So, Agnes, start off with, with your website, because you are founder of. My, okay, so I started this adult daycare center. Um, I really don't like to call it adult day because you know what? It's more like a, a senior club where what you are saying is exactly what the modern well, people Well, you're calling it adult I, care because that's just the way that the language is needed today to identify uh, it. But really, we all know that it's not a, a, yep. a, the same adult care. It's like and, saying senior center versus wellness center. We talked about this last Because, time. you know, if I call it senior center, then people were actually going to be... 
people. Oh, that's would, okay. That's <laughs> Kathy playing with her phone. <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> Kathy, put I the phone was down. Now she's, in this she's trying okay. to be live oh on God. Facebook. Facebook. Okay. No, so, hold on. Are you a Gen Xer? You're a Gen Xer, right? Okay. So even Gen Xers are not the same, right? See, we're still playing with our phones at our age. Okay. Right. She's in an interview. The first she's thing watching I'm in the radio, else. and that's yeah. like you are, know. Are, are you? Are we broken. boring you? Or you're? No. Oh, okay. She's trying to broadcast live on Facebook. So that's a problem. Okay. So you know. So basically, um, I'm trying to say that you know, I started this adult daycare center. It was yeah. because the licensing said you know, for some reasons, I have to put out this application and saying that this is adult day program. If I say something else, they might get confused because you know what? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, they get confused with adult day and senior center. They always feel like senior center, oh, that is a public facility that you go into the city hall. Next to the right. city hall, you get all these low, low, low meal price. And then $2, you get your turkey and you get your sandwiches. Yeah, nobody's, and you get going mashed in, potatoes. nobody's going into those these days anyway. It's less and less usage of those senior centers. Well, you know, some of the people, I mean, they have no place to go. And imagine. Like, you know what, if you don't have any information about where you can go, I mean, pretty much like a big issue City of Hall is industry. just the only place that you can find all the information. And then, they, of yeah. course, they would just send you, well, right here, we have the senior center. You can come here for this yoga, you know, Zumba, go Zumba, whatever. Wait, hold on. Right? Yoga, Zumba, senior center. What, 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 what? Wait, hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's supposed to be laminated tabletops. I'm pl playing bingo. You know, very slowly. <laughs> Not anymore. Right? That's maybe that. maybe I'm playing checkers, but the but the board has been around for so long that there's missing pieces. Right? Oh, yeah. Isn't that senior? Yeah. Center? No, so so Not senior centers is that usually you go into the crappy floor and then you might even fall with the time that you are dancing, and then the, the music sometimes you get really loud or really like a no sound at all. So you know, it's yeah, just it's not like, swing; it's dirty <laughs> dancing these days. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, so all these seniors that you know they they had no choice, and then um, so that's why I started this adult day program. And then so when I started with this Sacramento, I, I remember like they were asking me, are you sure? Are you just going to go with this private pay program? I mean, you know what? That's not most of people thinking about the adult day program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, because, you know, in state of California, we have two type of program. One is just, you know, the government subsidized program, which yeah. is like, you know what, that's provide for the low income people, then, then you can go in over there, you don't have to pay a dime, and then, you know, the government will tell you, okay, you get to qualify to come here for two days a week, three days a week, and then yeah. you can only stay here from A to two. And then, you know, in these sessions, and then we provide you PTOTSD, you know, a physical therapist, a speech therapist, and all that. So, and then, you know, we have the registered nurse on site for you. But these are only solely for the people who are low income. Yeah, so you have what to if, qualify for them. Exactly. And yeah. then, so what if, like, you know, your income is just in between? You are not super rich, and you are not really, like, really which, broke. Which, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this for a minute, okay? This is, this is a, 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 a category, a, a, a range of people people that is very large and it affects everything including qualifications for medical assistance and prescriptions and the, you know cancer treatments like you know if, if you're under a certain point you're going to get all that medical coverage handed handled if you happen to be a little bit higher which i mean what's the average price of a home in, in orange county like eight hundred thousand dollars almost six hundred thousand dollars right so most people do not qualify for that category right and it affects everything that they may need as they get older Right, so so that's why you know when the time I applied for the programs that they was just so confused. What are you gonna do the mm. private pay program? Are you sure what you are doing? And it's a Sacramento. And then, so that was the Sacramento. The first question I asked, like they asked me, and then so of course I was just thinking about like think about the future trend. Yeah. How many people is gonna be falling to this very low income level and then have like have to qualify themselves as like you know low income people yeah. and then getting the government subsidies? Right. And that's why I go into this private care program. I mean. This is a How private. How long have you had the program? Um, I had this program for uh, since uh, like two years ago. Okay. So it was two years ago I started this program, okay. and nobody ever heard of this. And when the time I started doing the market research, I still remember BOA. They was telling me that you know what? Oh my God! You ever started this? You have nobody to compete with because no one. There's no one thinking about any private pay program for adult day. Right. So you know. So that's why I'm thinking. Why is that? Why nobody want to do that? Because nobody was thinking that, you know what, our population is changing. And then the demographics is also changing. Everything in well, our whole society is changing, just like you said. Yeah. Like, you know what, we have different ethnicities moving into the community. Absolutely. And then the aging population is so totally changing. In the next 20 years, actually, you know, the senior 
population is going to get doubled. So I don't according, know if according, our according industry is a, prepared for that. No, no, no. Well, we know the industry is not prepared. We know that we are not <coughs> even close to being prepared for meeting the, the needs and the demands of this population going in. And listen, millennials are as lar larger a population than, than baby boomers. So, I mean, you know, within a certain number of years, you're going to have the same situation happen with also a large population so, coming so in. So that, that's why, I mean, you know, before we used to see that seniors driving on the streets and mm -hmm. going to the pharmacy store and pick up their drugs, pick up their medicines. And now you going just take to... Uber. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. I'd like an Uber black to go get my prescription, please. <laughs> much easier. Then, right, Medicare space. Much so, easier. So these days, I mean, Sorry, you know, County, I mean, you know. We have more... Well, we have more aging population to take care I'm gonna, of. I'm going to do it on my way to the Zumba class, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm, because I'm a multitasker, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to sleep in, and then I'm going to take my black, Uber so, Black. So so that's why, I mean, you know what? So think about that. You know what? These seniors, they're getting smarter. They, they, they want to make sure that, you know what, something that they can just get within the reach. So that's why I started this adult daycare center. And then, you know, it's not really, you know, targeted to all these, like, you know, low-income program. And then, um, so basically, we provide this, you know, we call it person-centered care. Person-centered so care, yeah. So huh? basically, the person-centered care bespoke, is that, you know. Bespoke care, basically. <laughs> Customi customized, customized, bespoke care. Customized, catered, yeah. Yeah. personal care personal care mm -hmm. plan so you know when the person start working into our center and then we will start giving them a bunch of questions asking them what exactly the food you mm -hmm. like and are you a vegetarian mm -hmm. what kind of uh, do you like fish do you like meat chicken and all that do you have any medical conditions high cholesterol mm -hmm. restrictions or maybe you have high blood pressure mm -hmm. diabetic and all those kind of things i mean you know this little questions can actually impact about your care Ag plan agnes let me let me even add another layer to this i mean if, if, and i and i've had this conversation even maybe had this conversation with henny in the last couple of days is that you know you're talking about what's the average okay so what's the average age i'm going to ask you this what's the average age of a person that's coming in in the last two years for your services like just give me an average so age. so you know we have people like you know um starting from 65 or 75 and then we also have people who are just 85 coming to our center but you've got but you've got 60 people in their 60s people in their 70s right yes okay so let's track back okay if you are 70 today okay you were 40 when you were 40 30 in, years ago 30 years 30. ago which is now we're already 2020 almost so you're talking about like in the in the 80s yeah. in the late 80s okay <clears throat> When I came to graduate school in the late 80s, you were 40. Right. Okay. Right. At, right. at the age of 40 in the 80s, there was such a thing called Jane Fonda. You were doing aerobics. You were doing. <laughs> right. You were doing yes. all yeah. kinds of outdoor yeah. activities. You were jogging. You were doing all this stuff. So if you are a person that over that period of the last 30 years have maintained some sort of active lifestyle, the fact that you are 70 today and you are now basically going into a facility to basically get care or to basically so, so, a social social, social space, space, social club, if you social call it social club, club right? Right. Your expectations is. That you may not basically be running a marathon, but you may actually still be doing low impact aerobics. You may be doing in chair <laughs> exercise. You may even be doing, you know, lighter weight repetitive yes, you know, sets. Rod, you will be very surprised actually. Uh, not only the light aerobic, I because we have the facility and we see people in their 70s and 80s and they are still actively taking Hands down, dancing Kevin. class that. You know, Zumba dancing, I cannot do it more than 10, oh, yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. They are staying in the class to right. finish, which is an hour. And so, they take it like three, four times a week. Well, my, the, my point is this. If you are in that generation that got sold on active lifestyle, especially in a place like California, places that are warm, that are, you could be out a lot of the year, right? You don't have humidity. Your active lifestyle isn't something you stop doing because now you have hit an age where you're supposed to be just gray and sitting in a rocking chair, right? And this incoming population is being is is facing a stagnant mindset to programming when it comes to these facilities and when it is government spending, government coverage. Thank God for that, okay, mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm. people that need it, right? <clears throat> but when it comes to that, that tends to be a very slow changing bureaucratic system that has an issue of liability and risk and worry, etc. You are now talking, what you're talking about, Agnes, used to be referred to, and it kind of took off, but only in a limited way, 
They used to call this thing concierge medicine. Right. It's Con the same thing. It's opting in. It's on demand so, care. Yes. That, it's more private. More of this, like you know, private care that you yeah. know, going to your life, like trying to tell you that okay, so you know what? I'm gonna just customize your personal care plan exactly the way you want it to be. Right. So you know, when client come into our center, we will ask them what exactly the food you like, and then you know what, any medical condition that it's gonna restrict your diet, right. and then we're gonna just make sure that you know you maintain your healthy lifestyle, which is about your activities, mm -hmm. the activities that you like to do, and I still remember we have one member exactly telling me that I do not want to play bingo anything you ask me to do I just don't want to play bingo because I've done this a thousand times in senior yeah. center just give me something else yeah. it's like so boring so yeah. you know what so in our center we always have something very innovative like you know poker tournament we want to encourage them to do the calculation do the numbers yeah, which is and all then, good for, for your exactly yeah yeah, and then blackjacks, and then you know what? We know about, like, you know what, seniors, this is the thing. If you don't really get them out of their routine. And if you win the tournament, they put you on a bus to Pechanga. <laughs> <laughs> it's a field get, trip. At least they get out of their house. They get the, out of the house. house. Okay, Absolutely. but the thing is, you know, they go to the casino. What do they get? They get booze, uh -huh. they get all these alcohols. This is oh, not really oh, that I'm not, good. I'm not even joking, Agnes, because my, my sister's mother in law, right? Her outing. Was the caregiver would get her would take her on a bus yes. to Pachanga, and right. the whole day that's what they did. Yeah. And so so and and, 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 and we're laughing, but on the East Coast, they used to call those guys this, the the leisure suit crowd that basically would go up to like uh, uh, what's it called uh, uh, Mohican Sun mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. Upper State mm -hmm. New York mm -hmm. and gamble. They would all show up in a, co a coach with their uh, uh, you know sports uh, sweatsuits on. And basically, velour or otherwise, okay? And basically, maybe there was gold chains, I don't know. I, I didn't get that much detail. <laughs> but basically, they would go out and gamble. And, and, and so, it's not an unusual thing. But the thing that really is interesting to me is that you could easily have somebody who's in their 70s that is not necessarily yes. running a marathon, but is training to walk a marathon. By the way, easily. Yesterday, right. Easily. Rod, yesterday I was talking with one of my friends, and we were saying that, you know what? We're looking to ourselves always like young. However, we are in fifties. Yeah, I guess the same goes. How with old the are same. you? I'm fifty-four. How old do you feel? Sometimes, maybe twenties, maybe sometimes even less than that. I don't know what sometimes. you're drinking, but <laughs> but I tell you something. You feel 20, no, no, but okay. listen, I tell you something. CBD oil, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> our, by the CBD way, right? Water. This is our C next C CBD, CBD water. water. No, this is our this next. This show is brought to you by Kirkland, who I understand they're bringing CBD. No, I'm done. Uh, uh, <laughs> this will be our next CBS show. CBD. Hey, well, you, you, why they sell they sell water with alkaline in it, right? So why not that, why not CBD? There is the water with CBD in it. Have you tried? It's five dollar. No, it's we're on a show. Why didn't you bring some with you? I should have. You were on your phone. Can we get it I delivered? Uh, listen, I, Amazon will Amazon. Rod, no, this makes yet. this makes I us. I think state of California allowed the Rod, CBD this, infused This makes drink. us. Oh, take it is. another oh, oh, yes, chance yes. to come again here yeah. for for discussing this. You oh, know, she's oh, gonna bring have, CBD water. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Yeah. Water, Join us when gummy. Kathy brings CBD water. To the show. <laughs> I see? have water. I have gummy bear. I have gum. Everything oh, that you want in CBD. So going back Paul, to what do we I have saying. any restrictions on CBD water? Uh, I'll check. I'm looking. Can you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you check with the with the with the legal department of Orange County Talk Radio? Uh, they're they're consulting legal. right now. CBD yeah, they're they're trying legal. to figure it out right oh, now. Oh, cannabis is legal too. <laughs> yeah, but, but but you see, we have such a wide audience that we broadcast outside of California. <laughs> no, right. we don't. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, going back no, to the California same subject, yeah, I was legal. telling you that cannabis. even when you are 70s or 80s, yeah. you're always looking to yourself like. You're young. What? I'm, I'm young. I'm not. I'm still. Right. Like well, we talk. It. We say age is only a number. That's right. You're only as old as exactly. you feel. A exactly. It's actually true. True. Yes. yes. So all these people, seniors, are living in our homes or coming to the uh, senior adult care. Yeah. They always think that they are still young and they can still do many things like yep. they were in the 20s and 30s right. and 40s. So it, uh, age is as. Uh, you said a number, only a number. Well, and the language uh, language about aging, we've talked about this from the day one that we started the show. The language that defines aging today has not really been written. It's it's really kind of wide open, yep. you know, open plains, covered wagon days when it comes to that language. Because we used to j play this game on this show from the very beginning. We used to say, oh, you know, baby boomers used to be hippies. Then they became yuppies. 
and then basically now what are they right yeah. and we yeah. and, and yeah. we were like stuck we were stuck on this word like what is this so every guest that we came into the show we asked the question okay so baby boomers were hippies right. then they were yuppies and then what were they right and right. every and people were like i think we like we couldn't figure out what it was and before you before you weigh in paul uh, okay. he's preparing himself no so, no he's okay. very he's, he's actually very proud so, yeah, so because after four years yeah, after four, he's, he's starting he's a late bloomer after four I years came he came up with, up with an answer, answer right but, <laughs> okay but 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 basically w- the most me- most memorable thing is when we asked that to a lady ellen who yeah. was the uh, president of the orange county chapter for national aging place council and she looked at both of us and she said why do i need to have a label i'm ellen so not only do we f- do do baby boomers feel not like they're hippie yuppie whatever like whatever the marketing industry mm-hmm. or branding industry yes, wants yes. to sell yep. to as yeah. a group yeah they also have that individuality of I am Ellen I am Agnes I am Rod right right but to give him his moment in the sun <laughs> that's right okay there Paul, is a brand Paul, Paul actually in a moment of frustration and anger which is very Irish of him. Oh, okay. oh. Basically comes in one day and we're talking about this and he goes, I finally figured it out. I finally figured it out. I have an answer. We used to be yeah. hippies, then we became yuppies, and now we are? We are full of poop. We're, 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 we're poop. Okay. And I'm like, we well, are... I'm so glad I waited four come years on. for that answer. Okay. Right? Paul, that, come Mine on. So, so, what, so, so, so what does poop stand for, Paul? Poop stands for pissed off old people. <laughs> okay. And if anybody knows anything about baby boomers, they are very much opinionated and have strong feelings about things. So when he tells you he's a pissed off, off old yeah. people, yeah. it's because of things like we don't have things that we want to do in senior facilities. We don't have things that basically no, reflect our all, lifestyle. They all educated and they are very well educated and they know what they want. They got all things figured out. So right. see, Paul, it's not know, bad. You figured it out okay. what exactly that you I are now. Baby boomers so, are, they so, know what they want, Agnes. They know what they, they know what they want and they're wondering why they don't have it already. That's exactly. That's the thing about baby boomers. So that's why they don't want this one size fits all. Exactly. And then, so, you know, that's why I started Adult Day Care Center. And then, so, you know, we started for this program. And basically, why we dip, why we are different from most of the others is just, you know what, first of all, we have the flexible time. Think about that. If your kids is going to drop you off at the center, and then they have to rush out for the work. And then, you know what, our center starts from seven o'clock in the morning and then so what if your kids ended up need to you know have overtime so you know what from any time before seven o'clock you can come back and pick up your parents mm-hmm. so you know so that makes your life so much easier yeah. so but compare with the government program think about that you are really always like you know strict yourself like a, between this eight well, to two more, o'clock it's more regimented How, you don't have that yeah. flexibility and then the other thing is that i just don't understand you are trying to get those senior Oh, how to get active, active lifestyle. Yeah. And then why you want to rush them to get them back home, right? So this is the thing. I mean, after 2 o'clock, what are they going to do? I mean, you know, are they going to just send them back and then so they can just stay being alone at home? Well, before, Annie, I, I know you, you guys... I, no, no, I just want to say that yeah. Agnes was so much scared to come on live. And now she doesn't <laughs> stop talking. She's the only one who's talking in this show. So, so, you so uh, thank, I, thank you so, for pointing so, that I, out. I, yeah. I just want to say this. So that's okay. No, go yeah, I thought it was just me who no, saw me that. Too, so. <laughs> So sorry, and no, whenever okay, I get a chance to sing, you know what? See, no one can stop me. No, I, 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 I no, I really, I really love it. Okay, Thank but you. Let, let, me, let me ask this, okay? Because everybody who's listening to this is going, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's private care. Uh-huh. It's, 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 it's Orange County. You know, I need to go sell my bullion gold that I have in my safe, basically, to afford this. Right. Okay, what is? Uh, first of all, give the website. The website is www.americanagetaway.com. Okay. So it's like you are going on a cruise ship, but it's too bad it's on the land. So you don't even get a seasick. <laughs> and, and there's there's another one that's on Facebook. I think you're under Americana Senior Care is the page. Americana Senior Care, that's, yeah. the, that's the name that we yeah. got approved by the state of okay. California. So look but, for, know, look for it under both. Yeah, yes. if you're going to find it under get, uh, Getaway, then do it under. But listen to the name, like Americana Getaway. AmericanaGetaway.com. There's, no, there's no senior in there. No. There's no center in there. No. Okay. So branding again important. AmericanaGetaway.com. It's easy. Just think about that. You know, if you want to have a nice day off, and think about getaway. Right. So Americana Getaway. So here's here's my million dollar freebie uh-huh. to every friggin' city out there. 
change the sign from senior center to wellness center or right. something more appealing. That's your million dollar. You want to send me any kind of residual on that? Great. But every city out there has a primary piece of property that's sitting in a center of activity right. that is being utilized less and less every year. That needs to be reprogrammed. And, and I am a, I am a senior, and I won't go there because I don't see myself as a exactly. senior. Exactly. So the wording is very important. Yeah. Right. So right. He's, that's why he's poop. He's <laughs> okay. a pissed, pissed off, off old person that's because why. it says senior center on the that's building. That's true. That's One why more. we don't call right. them seniors. We call no. them older adults. So, you know. We so just call him Paul. <laughs> <laughs> we just call him Paul here. <laughs> yeah, he, he just wants to, just, you know, Paul. Oh, yeah. Like Cher. Yeah. You just yeah. say one name. Hey, cargo <laughs> pants sometimes, maybe. Cargo shorts. You hey, say Cher. You say, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, but, but, but again, Paul, again, is a perfect example. Okay, and I keep using him as a poster child for this show in terms of a baby boomer. Okay, it's like almost, it's almost like having like I don't have to pay for this, right? I have a built-in, you know. That's right. Let me point to our example, okay, <laughs> Paul. Paul, built in. okay, that I don't have to pay for. So built-in audience. Pa Paul actually reinvented himself at what age, Paul? Uh, Setting late, up the station. Late fifties. Late fifties. Yeah. Okay. He reinvents, reinvents himself out of necessity to a certain extent and to, to, to safety and, 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 and you know, continuity of his marriage because his wife was going to probably kill him for he stayed at home <laughs> right. any longer, yeah, right? right? But he needed to get out of the house. And his, his business floundered in the last economic downturn. And he basically was spending way too much time, like the rest of people half his age, on basically watching YouTube. Yeah. And so he decided to basically take $10,000, I think it was, wasn't it? Like yeah, 10K something or like that, that yeah. Right? Uh, and you know, IRS, go ahead and you know, now you know what this is. Ten thousand dollars, Paul, basically. Shh, don't say that. Okay, set up this radio station. But Paul, without any experience, how? how did no, you because this is where it really gets interesting. Yeah. And again, another wow. layer of reflection on baby boomers. What did you? Why? Why did you set up a radio station, Paul? I, to answer Hanny's question. I had been. Uh, I'll, I'll do it a little longer than you want. I had. I don't have a lot. Of time I had been in PR for 20, 30 years. PR industry collapsed when the media collapsed. Great Recession came along, all my clients gone. Hmm. Mid 50s, oh my God, I gotta reimagine myself. What can I do? And I thought of ways to rebuild my PR agency. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were writing now blogs and doing other social media work. I said, well, I don't wanna do that. I wasn't a writer. What had I been? I had been in real radio as a kid. In high school, in and, college. Uh, in college, <laughs> and run the college radio station, then had worked professionally for a while and back in the 80s. And I discovered podcasting by, and looking at new social media and new media out there, I discovered something called podcasting. I said, well, that's like what I did as a kid. It's like radio, only it's streamed instead of over through the air. Uh, it's recorded and listened to later when you want instead of right now. And I started fooling around in my house and bought some equipment. I said, it hasn't changed that much in 40 years. I know how to do this and started experimenting with it originally as a way to re rebuild my PR business. And I quickly said, forget that. I'm going to open up a podcast studio for those who want and, more and than I do asked, it yourself. I asked you recently, uh -huh. because I figured after four years of having to deal with you, I, I had the right to yeah, ask you this, right. right? But basically, I asked you, I said, given your nuts and bolts, money made, you know, financial reward, if you will, yeah. in mm -hmm. addition to other layers of re reward, that you were when you were working versus today, what doing what you're doing, which is in my book a pursuit of passion, right? A reflection of something that you enjoyed, a rediscovery past, of something, a rediscovery I, of, of something, something I'd forgotten, okay? yeah. And mm -hmm. making a, an encore career out of it, right? Okay, not out of necessarily a hundred percent necessity, but out of the things like getting out of the house, having an activity, feeling, some of it was waking necessity. up, in, yeah, yeah right. waking up in the morning, and having mm -hmm. a sense of purpose mm -hmm. to do something, right? Right. Are you? How are you doing financially now for, in comparison? Making more money, having more fun, That's with great. more potential. That's the, That's I'll tell you the other thing great. that shocks me at my age. I'm in my uh, mid sixties here, mm -hmm. is that I didn't think I'd be cool and relevant. I thought I, to use. I was in the film business a long yeah. time ago. It was like a long fade to black. It was just slowly going to fade away, and uh, was, friends would die off, acquaintances, of businesses would die off, calls would dry up. And I would just eventually become. Oh, you're not going gently into the good night. No, sure. yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to Bad quote, night, maybe, but good to night. To quote no. Dylan Thomas, don't <laughs> but, go but gently. But Paul, I have a question. How do uh -huh. you still grow up? How do you still go on and, and make every day? It's, it's a daily 
Oh. That's that's a different that show. Not. That's a different show. You need to pay for that information. <laughs> oh. it, I'm trying to give him a he's, chance to talk about himself. The, he's <laughs> in the mood of charging us today. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, about, he was <laughs> trying to charge us for the water. That's right. So <laughs> new policy. You are setting yourself in trouble. Okay. Right, no one knows right. how to make money my, here. My, my, the reason why I basically wanted him to share that and, and bring it up is this: it directly dials in with what Agnes is saying. You have somebody who still has purpose. Who yes. still has passions? Yes. Who still has things that are of interest and intriguing? And look at him. I mean, he, he not that not that there's any such thing as a normal what a sixty one year old, sixty two year old keep should, going should sixty four year old, sixty five year old. <laughs> How old are you? I will be uh, sixty four in January. Okay, so sixty four year old. And there isn't really an image of what a sixty four year old should look like. Whereas a lot of people think maybe there should be, but in fact it doesn't exist anymore. That that thing that has been shattered. Okay. Yeah. Look at him. He's happy. He's spending time with yes. his grandkids. Wearing a T-shirt. He's doing something. You know, he wears a T-shirt every day. How many people out there can say they wear a T-shirt every day and make more money they did in their 60s than they did in their 50s? Yeah. That's why I'm asking him because I need to share this kind of story with yeah. our people. You, you can be – uh, To tell them that you, still life is going and we have to – See, he didn't realize – he didn't realize, okay, he didn't realize that in course of him setting up this radio station, he's also making himself an iconic – <laughs> no. <Right>. Baby <laughs> boomer <laughs> figure. Huh? No, yeah, absolutely. Like, this, I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm, it's it's I'm a very inspirational story. That's right. You know, so you, know what's the, you know what's I, interesting? I, I you expect my rates to drop next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, Here, tell this to people who yeah. are in your centers. Yeah. You can still be cool. You can still be relevant. You can still have passion On and your purpose. own terms, by the way, Paul. Mm. On your own terms. On your own terms. Now, Maybe you're not as lucky as I am to make as much or more than you did before, but you can. But your reward is not. I'm, I bring out the financial only because I want to make us make it really pay, people pay attention. Mm -hmm. But you are rewarded in having a purpose. Yes. Pursuing a passion, continuing to learn and grow. I can constantly see you looking at stuff in yep. terms of upgrades and staying on top I'm of looking things. Looking right now and, something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And and I can't emphasize this enough because for me this sounds crazy, but in my generation purpose making a making an impact any any was age, as much mm -hmm. any it age. was as uh, it was more important in some ways than how much money we made yeah. i know that having that a purpose unbelievable no no it's it's not unbelievable because so, because you guys fought the good fight Right. You you had your your whole social upri uh, uprising against Vietnam. Yeah, you had you had the you know, and everything you, else, the civil every, rights, every, every and single thing, civil rights. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, even even when you were so, yuppies, you had yeah. you had impact on everything that you basically touched in that work. So to years. be to be cool again, to be cutting edge, to be on the front edge of something that's being discovered right now. I feel like I'm in the early days of the film business. I'm a silent movie director. We're trying to figure out what a silent movie is. Someday they'll get it right and they'll make millions off it. But for right now, it's the Wild West, and yeah, anybody can play. The, support, the same thing silent, could be true sure. in uh, virtual reality or yep. in other fields yeah, yeah. where people are inventing it right now. I didn't think at my age I'd be part of that anymore. So and that's you, exciting. You, a year ago, we were talking about how baby boomers, especially with the, you know the result of the election, all this stuff, that baby boomers were disheartened. Yeah. Baby boomers were coming out of this economic downturn. They were Very feeling like, so. you know, yes. I don't have yeah. enough money. I'm going to outlive my resources, right. all of this right. stuff. They were really disheartened. Right. And it's interesting because, I'm again, I'm just seeing it through his eyes here every week on Wednesday, <laughs> right? And what I've noticed is in this last few months, there has been a shift. The shift has been more empowerment. And it is partly anger so, and irritation so and wanting to make a difference. So taking control in life is very important to all of us. Exactly. So that's why, you know what, we start this adult day program. We make them feel like they are in control. Independent yes. decisions. Exactly. They come in here. It's not because, you know what, hey, here is the food. Go eat it. You don't like it? Screw you, right? Yeah, right? No. So, you know, basically. She was afraid you know, of being on the show. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Those, 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 are, those are gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And going back to our subject, which yeah. is different cultures and different. Yeah, no, yeah, and, 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 yeah let's talk about that, Annie. So, I, I guess. Kathy wanted to say something because we were discussing well, this. Well, let, let, let me just remind everybody who's listening. So part of the thing that we wanted to talk about, and it, and it gets it's great, like because things are changing. They're yep. different. You True. cannot put a True. label on things. You can't put it in a neat little box, okay? And we have a diverse situation that comes down to ethnicity, comes down to spirituality, 
comes down to how you practice, you know, nutritional habits, what you, you eat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And nutritional habits could be based on spiritual faith, or it could be based on just your nutritional, you know, medical conditions. Yeah, what if you're a vegetarian? Yeah. Or, or, yeah. or hey, yeah. I, yeah. hey, I want, I'm, I'm, 60, I'm 65 right? years old and I want to be on a keto diet. I mean, it could be as simple as that, right? Of course. Yeah. So One Kathy, thing that you guys yeah. don't realize that uh, 50 these days is 30. Yeah. Well, wow. 70 these days is. 50 before. But so. you know what? And it's not just a feel good exactly. way of saying it. It's actually true. But let I, me, can I give you one other little example since, since we're getting real here? Uh, my wife recently got laid off mm -hmm. from a 30 year bank career uh, because they wiped out the position. She's in her, I hate to say it, in her late 60s. And the assumption was, you well, uh, so just to go get a, you know, just start, you're retired. Just start it now. And she's like, one, I didn't save enough to, to yeah. start it now. Sure. And two, even if I did, she's been sitting home watching TV for the mm -hmm. last couple of months. She's going nuts. Mm -hmm. you know, and, she's, and she's feeling depressed because she feels like her whole life she's worked since she was 14. She likes working. She likes being around what people. What did she do, Paul? She, uh, she was a branch manager for a bank, and then she got into district operations. Uh, so, you know, relatively high-skilled jobs. She doesn't want to go back and work at Walmart and, right. or ask yeah. uh, if you want fries with that order. Uh, and, and so she doesn't, she feels unwanted. She doesn't feel like she's contributing. She doesn't feel like she's meeting any. She's isolated. Right. She's all these things. And she says, I'm not done. I, I, when did it get so, written so, into the so, world that we're done? And so, then I read in the Atlantic yeah. magazine, which really pissed us off. I usually like the Atlantic magazine. I'm kind of a liberal old hippie or whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody wrote a big opinion about the modern race going on, and they said, too many geriatrics. Uh, they said this to, um, to Biden, to Elizabeth Warren, and to um, uh, Bernie. Get out. Oh. It's, give it up. Give, uh, turn the torch over to somebody else. Your time has come. Step aside. And their response was, who says I'm done at 70? Now, I know that's exactly. not appealing to those exactly. younger waiting to the take the torch. Span, but, yeah. The lifespan for yeah. men in yeah. the next 20 years, we are looking at 92 years yeah, old. For women, 93 years old. So, By you know way, what? Paul, uh, and then we even have the new fighting thinking that, you know what, why recently people got divorced so fast? Like, you know, so often you see right. pretty much everybody got divorced when they are 40, 50. Because, you know, look at it. If you only get to live 40 years, and then you know what? Hey, I'm about end of my life. I can put up with her for you know, <laughs> two or three years. No problem. But if you are thinking like, hey, I have another 40 years to go. Oh, my God. Exactly. I better start by, with by, my new by, life. By the way, right? you, know that, you know that divorce rate is higher percentage-wise after 48 yeah, years that's... of age. Because your like, kids like move you, out, you, you, you look actually, at each other, actually, and you say, what so, do we so have in common they say, anymore? They say, you know, 50, yeah, right. if you're married life, 50%, yeah. Yeah. Yes. If, you're, if you get married over after past 48, you have actually 60% chance of divorce. Exactly. Wow. Right. It, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, it's, so, so it isn't, uh, is it, it's no reflection, this sort of nuclear family, couples, this stuff is not a reflection of the reality we live in. But no. did, I, did I share that? It may, it may be a nostalgic throwback to some people's desire for a definition of life and existence, but it's not the reality we but live in. But did I share that other statistic with you? I saw some major publication, some news source. I wish I had it in front of me here. But the majority no, do, of wish, aging do, baby boomers yeah. are going to spend their final years alone because of death and divorce. But you know what, Paul? That's not limited to baby boomers. That's well, not limited yeah. to baby boomers. With That's the millennial, with the millennial generation yes. right now, then you know that that there is there are places where you actually go pay to be hugged. Yeah, I can believe it because okay. you're going to yeah. be alone in and, spas. You and... go pay to be hugged. Okay, then the number the number one fear of millennials is loneliness. As connected as they are on social media, they are still one thing that came out of a study is loneliness. Because okay. you know what they, I mean, internet tickets, they're all there's problems. No de there's no and depth of connection. And that's why they don't need to life. get out it's of the house. Virtual. That's why yeah. there's no true. social interaction. Yeah. So, so, exactly. so with all of that that we're talking about, okay, I again ask the question, Agnes, what, in your, in your case of your, if you're, of your uh, center, okay, what is the cost to something like that? 
So, you know, so it's, it's free. She does it just as a purpose, as a passion. I it's, charge for everything. Stop here, trying but she to get does things for free. For free. <laughs> so, you know, people come here. You know what? There's so many reasons they want to come here. They come here because, you know, they don't want to feel alone. And yeah. then they come here. And then basically, this is a place that they feel like they have control in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, they have nothing. They got taken away. They cannot eat good food anymore because of their health condition. And then their wife being just, you know, always scolding him. And so, you know what? I just want to be alone. I want to just, you know, find someone that, you know, I can talk with. And then, you know, come to our center because whatever that you say, and then you know what? You always find someone who can and be And your agreed. center is in Orange County. Where is it? Yes, Tustin, city okay. of Tustin. What does it cost? You know, actually, you know, our cost is even cheaper than home health care. I mean, right now we are only charging for like, you know, um, $12 or $15 an hour. It depends on your condition. Mm -hmm. And then some people, if they cannot go to the, the toilet by themselves mm -hmm. and then you know we have to arrange one-on-one so -on -one, the, 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 and that, that's yeah. going to be at on but then, then again I mean these are just very minimum charges yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah and that's why I'm asking you because I want people to understand that what we're talking about is not unaffordable and compare that with the average nursing home cost today or assisted living uh, uh, facility. Well, even in home I, care. I, I want to stress not, this I mean, assist living. Much more than that. The yeah. assist yeah. living, usually, what I really don't like that model is that, you know, the moment that these people moving to the assist living facility, they mentally feel like they were abandoned by the whole society. Because, you know what? Yeah. They don't do you're, anything. You're they don't off, get basically. out of this. They don't get out the door anymore. Like, they just right. stay within this center and then everything is within there. So, you know what? You're only going to see the same garden, same patio, same people. And then there's no change in your life. But you have to understand, when our brain cells start deteriorating according to our age, I mean, you know, we, 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 your aging process Some always of us, they started slow down your brain. Yeah. So, Why so, are you, you know looking what? at me when you say yeah, this? I, 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 <laughs> so, so that's why, sorry. <laughs> so that's why, you know what, you always have to change your routine. You have to break out your routine, go do something, do the serve, I mean, try to do the internet serving, and then, you know, do something different. So can I ask both of you something? The, the question that I've been burning to ask, and, and we only have a few minutes left in the show, so maybe oh, this no, is... Oh, no, we're going a little longer. Oh, we're going longer. Okay, what the hell then? <laughs> we'll go all day. Um, we got nothing to do. We're old. Hey, we're listen, if around. I'm going to let you talk, <laughs> we're going longer. Here's the question. So here I am reinventing myself in my mid-60s and starting a new business uh, that... I don't know. Is this going to go into my mid seventies or eighty? I don't know what point well, do Agnes I. Agnes just told you you're looking at ninety two, dude. Ninety two. Okay. Yeah. So you still got half so as people much are, time as you just did. If people are reinventing themselves, they're getting new relationships. Uh, they're getting new businesses. They're doing new challenges. They're doing something new. Can I do that within a facility, either a day facility or a full uh, live-in facility? Is that kind of um, uh, independence uh, can I can, could I run this business out of an assisted living facility? oh wait oh. hold on did you just propose an assisted living Job. shared we Job. work Job. 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 So, Job. So, so you are trying to okay, okay. so this is the thing wow. that's the problem we, we, we about the assisted living score programming in uh -huh. there too whoa so, Paul so. you can come tomorrow okay. and start <laughs> okay. anybody, anybody, yes. anybody we're we'll copywriting that idea right now just come <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? So, if absolutely. You, so, for example, when my oh, yeah. aunt, my aunt moved into a, a board and senior care rework, uh -huh. exactly. My aunt moved into a a, a few years ago. Uh, 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 last summer, she died. Last fall, she died shortly after she moved in. She stayed in her in, independent apartment to the last possible moment, falling, frightened. Finally, I said, "Can't do this anymore." She couldn't afford a full assisted living. She couldn't afford five, six, seven thousand a month. So we moved her into a board and care facility, a house yeah. that took a couple right. in. In a beautiful house, in a beautiful neighborhood, I thought she'd be happy. She was miserable. She died within months of going there. Yeah. And because one of, she lost her independence. People are now telling her what to do. Even though it was independent, she could eat when she wanted. Right. Uh, she ended up sitting in the room alone. She didn't go out and socialize with others. She did. It was somebody else's house, and she was there in her mind. If she had somehow, now I'm not saying my aunt wanted to start a business at 93, but maybe, maybe she wanted to do something. I think your aunt wanted to get into CBD oil. <laughs> you know, as crazy as it was, she was talking about that at the end because she see, wasn't a lot of time. As, as right wing and Republican see, so as she, she was. If she yeah. had an assisted living facility Why that not? was a WeWork where she could set, she up, set up a little. Why not? To you know, God, like, I never thought of this. Why she, that would. She took out a. So she wasn't just doing busy Hello. work and bead work. She wasn't just doing. Uh, 
you know, stuff, uh, uh, playing bingo and pointless exercise, time wasters, she could have, because she was a businesswoman, she could have taken those skills and that interest and started something, yes. maybe a part-time business exactly. or something. Exactly, so that's why, oh, you know, given her, in, which would have given her purpose. So, yes. so in our adult, day, more money in our more. adult day center, we actually have the beauty salon on the second floor, and then we have the wellness center, and we also have these medical clinics right next to it. So you know what? It's everything like within the reach. And, but you know, so. But, but you're missing my point. You're so there, you, you're offering things to help them. Right, help, help them, the wellness. What if but you, you know offered what? something that empowered them? Give empowered them things them. To help them help them so that's why yes. we always have the doctors to come in to give the to give them speech give them seminars and encourage them to learn so for example our daily routine one of the session is what learning how to use computer and then we try to in, we try to make them engage in what's happening in the society. Have the news talk. That's discussed about what's news talking about. So this is the thing. But this idea but that, I, that doesn't exist today, right. the idea is what they read in the Atlantic. You reach 70, you're done. What my wife got laid off, I don't want you to get another job. Just you're done now. For the next 20 years, from this moment, whether you, you want to step aside and let other people exactly. take your place. What if you could instead empower people through the Internet? Because I can, I can do this from anywhere. Paul, this is where all We these work for retire. old people. Yeah, I'm telling this you. This is all these uh, retire coaches, retire uh, attorneys, yeah. retire, and they, they, free, they offer free services. There but, is many organizations. But all of that is this right, model but, but that you, you guys, you guys are... You know, this is what happened during this conversation. What happened during this conversation is we were looking at, at some point, we are looking at that, you know, having seniors, okay, learning computer skills, learn, seniors knowing how to use an I iPhone, seniors knew, knowing how to, uh, you know, volunteer services free. That's where we started. What's but what happened? What happened in the last two yeah. minutes? If you were paying attention, yeah, is we are talking now about the fact that in very short period of time of ten years or less, mm -hmm. th it's not going to be enough that I have. The senior already knows how to use a computer. Yes. Exactly. I'm I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 54. If I'm going to be 65 in let's say let's say in 10 years, right, 11 years. You're gonna make, bring me in to teach me how to use a computer. I'm gonna tell you, uh, 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 no, 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 no. I didn't. Even, I will tell you how to program in BASIC, how to program yeah. in Cobalt. Okay. I already know and how I to social just, media, right? I don't want to just. Yes, spend... I'm showing my age, right? But my point is, you, teaching me. Oh, look, I have. You have a Skype center, or oh, you have a no a billiard center. That's not gonna be. It's <laughs> not gonna be enough. I'm gonna be like, okay, how can I basically? Take my skill set and knowledge base and open and a new business. do something that I could maybe do profit, nonprofit, give me purpose, get me out of the house. The reality of my financial situation because I took a bath on the economic downturn right. is I'm going to need to have incremental residual income. Right. Right. Bingo. Now, what we just developed, ladies and gentlemen, is an encore career center. For people wow, who want say to that do again. Encore, Encore career, career center. 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 Huh. Yeah. So, so and it could be part time. It could also it could intern, be... by the way, younger people because you have a brain power base yes. wow. of all those people's uh, experiences under one roof. Are we allowed to speak about? CBD and how this will impact senior life and wellness. W what part of me telling you that, that <laughs> his aunt should have opened the CBD business <laughs> did you get? Because this is something. Paul, one, what he was talking about. You're trying wife. to get seniors to do no, a, a multi-level CBD talking about CBD his situation. wife and he, she doesn't do any. Why not? She starts something wow. helping. I think Henny is offering we're, your wife a we're job. At, we're exploring that. If she can't find something, and she's got a couple interviews this week, but if that doesn't pan out, she is... And it isn't her first impulse because she's worked for somebody her whole life. But I'm trying to encourage her to think of starting, even if it's a side business or a sum business, uh, find something that, that she finds some interest so, and so passion he, and make some money. Because that's the idea. The so idea that at 70, you can't make any more money. He's mentoring his wife yeah. to transition from receiving a paycheck to becoming an entrepreneur, yes, mm -hmm. which is excellent, right? Because she's now she's At, not a in senior. Her, in her late she's not 60s. yet a senior, I would say, and she's not that in the age of forties and fifties. So she can use her experience, whatever she had learned. She's her dynamic. Life. And her she's network so, and her network. So still, she can do skills. Something. So tremendous please skills. Tell this to your wife, Paul, that there's big chances. Don't let her stay at home. Yeah, come on. Being so, an but, entrepreneur isn't, isn't for the last yeah. thirty years. Yeah. Most of these entrepreneurs that been successful lately, they start their business Later. 
at age 55 and above. Yes, I believe that. It's yeah. very true. So very true. it's not like that you think that, oh, because I lost my job due to my no. age or they closed that department, then I'm worthless or I cannot do anything. And when did we get the notion that, the, this was my parents' notion, the notion that you work hard and then you can't wait to retire and do nothing. You go from working 12-hour days like my dad did to doing nothing. That's, well, that's and they're like just going to play. I would say that that's and a volunteer. No, I would say that that's a notion that we basically inherited from an industrial economy, because basically you worked manual Absolutely. hard labor, and you basically worked certain hours, and if you in, and that had an impact on your body, it had an impact on your age expectancy, and if you basically survived beyond a certain point, just like an old nag. Put out the horse. You, yeah. you, they out. put you right. out in the field, yeah. Yeah. or they turn you into glue. Right. So right. then they cannot turn you into glue without basically somebody being accused of murder. <laughs> they put you out in the field. You, you, that is the most, in, in all the years you've done this show, that's the most insightful thing you've You've said some insightful things in the past, but you really <laughs> nailed it right there. I'm Boy, not, wow, that was a good <laughs> No, you really nailed back, it there. Back oh. So, so you really that's nailed it why there. I feel like, you know, most, I mean, more older adults, they are taking chances to go do something different. They start traveling. They open up their eyes, and then they start coming to all kind of ideas to right. start their own business. When you start traveling, your mind start thinking, and then, and then so you start getting involved in this volunteer in the community. But again, I'm going to caution you. The, but the, some people when you stop. But some people stop there, Agnes. That is the, that is their there. arrival. I'm and just some saying. People start there. I'm just saying. Yes, there are people that are that are old and tired and can't, don't want to do anything and, and and want to take it easy and great. So so volunteer, give back, do other things. I, I get that. That's going to be part of it. And some of it will be playing and and traveling and seeing the world that you denied yourself. But there's the third group that yeah, but nobody's. For how picked. long are you going to do that? Exactly. How long are you going to play golf? The third the third group that I'm talking about is me. Am I going to stop being an entrepreneur just because I'm 70 or 80? Am I going to have to give up Would you doing say that something you're creative? An entrepreneur? I, th oh, I yeah. feel like, you know, the so very you important thing is that you always want to feel yeah. that you have a choice in life. So when you have a choice to go to work and you have a choice to not to go to work, that's what you are aiming and for. And to be able to exercise that independent exactly. choice. Exactly. In spite well, of everything around, and the other in hard reality limitations. Exactly. Yeah. The hard reality is that you are not allowed to work past a certain point. You're not expected to work past a By certain point. corporate and, structure. And you're everybody exactly. because of this. Like you said, I think the industrial world set aside, and they, we we used you up, and we set you as out to pass now. New, you know, fresher, younger, stronger, stronger yeah. yeah. And that notion that somehow you're supposed to spend the last third of your life. From if you live to be ninety, you know thirty, you weren't you were you weren't doing anything. You're getting educated and you're getting well, started. Well, now and everything. now it's thirty. Thirty of your to life. yeah, thirty to sixty, you're working your butt off, yep. and then from sixty to ninety, you're supposed to just take it easy and glide, and 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 that doesn't help society. That doesn't help you, right. and it wastes all that uh, talent that's out there. I think, and the baby boomers aren't going to put up with it. I think that I think we're going to be people like me. I never thought of it. If I went to a facility, if I had needed additional care and I couldn't live at home anymore, I would want a place that had more than just fun and more than just health think care. Of, think about I would want something that could be a WeWork space where I could but, keep but working. I like that yeah. WeWork space concept. So basically you come here, you get it together with like-minded people, yes. mingle about your ideas. We brainstorm. And then, yes. Yeah. And then so we have this main cave that you know, people yeah. start talking about the news. Oh, I hate this president. Oh, I like him. And then, Or so we they do start, something. Yeah. We, start a, we start a foundation uh, and run it by oh, virtual yes. reality. We start a... A virtual assistant yep. business. We start a yes. uh, a consulting so business. So now, now let me add one more scary element to this. Yeah. Okay. Imagine if actually our mindset was turned to that as an opportunity. And you tell me from a risk factor, a financial institution looking to invest and support an entity or a business venture that is backed by people with experience and a lifetime of experience in a particular industry versus somebody who basically is just starting with a good idea. At what is the lower risk? Of to course, invest in? people, to invest in, people yeah. with experience. Right. See? So just think about that, because today, when you have somebody of a certain age that's going into the bank to try to get money to basically start a business, they look at them and basically see that they are supposed to be retired. And, you know, they should be supposed to be looking at, like, tapping into the 401ks, not basically starting one. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. And, and yet, and yet the, it is counterintuitive because the person with the experience 
I mean, okay. I'm just going to go around. You, 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 said, you, said, you said 64, right? Yeah. Okay. Hanny, you're 54 or 53? You guys are kids. 54. Kathy? 51. Okay. Oh, your children. 49. Okay. All right. You were the little kids no, tagging no, no, after me. No, 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 no. This, 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 this is okay because some of us are, and I'm, and I'm 54, so some of us have crossed that 50. Ill illusionary line of 50. Yeah. Yeah. Agnes is pretty close. And Paul is so far behind. <laughs> <laughs> Way behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But, but here's, here's my question. Okay, my question is, do you guys feel that as you approach 50 or you are at 50 or a certain imaginary number in your head, that at some point life becomes a situation where failure is not something that worries and scares you anymore? It's part of the journey of getting to where you have gotten, right? So again... What Paul did at the age of probably what, 54, 54, 55, 54, about your age, yeah. 54, 55, is he took about a risk that thing. maybe at the age of 30 he wouldn't have. Because his approach to f in mindset of failure and how it is framed, like failing at something and how it's framed, is completely different. And well, willingness I, to take the risk I also is had a, a grown, survivable situation. I had a grown it's daughter a, by that point, so I didn't have to worry about you know putting bread on the table for her. So right, much but my you, wife but, is but, working, but you yeah. had your daughter back at home. I did, okay, yeah. With her newborn That's and true. her boyfriend, and you were right. a multi-generational household, and you right. were taking care of your aunt in the desert. So right. don't minimize the fact that you didn't have any of these burdens. You actually had okay. a lot of but stuff But what was the, the secret word? Experience. So this is your back. This is the back. Which act you to do something and ambitious, okay. and, of course. Well, and and if in your spirit of being an entrepreneur, doesn't go away, mm -hmm. of course, because your no, age exactly. basically goes up no. a number. No, no. no. In you, fact, you, if you guys are entrepreneurs, are you going to quit when you're 64? Not now. If you, if not 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 <laughs> I don't think, never I think, in my I dictionary. Think so. I think I still I, have another 40 years. Yeah. And and I have three but boys. They are grown 28, 25, and 17. There is not even a week pass by that one of their friends are not home and asking me, what should I do about this business? What do you think? Right. Because they look at me as an But what you don't so realize, that, that all of you going. in this room right now, is yeah. right now, I'm going to tell you 10 years from now, people are going to look at you differently. 20 years from now, they're certainly going to look Absolutely. at you differently. They're going to say, give it up, Gramps. What are you still doing? Sell it. Give it up. Go play. Go enjoy. Go volunteer. And you're going to like, hell no. I still got something to contribute. Hell no. I still want to make uh, an impact. Hell still want, I still want to make money. Paul, the way that right now the cosmetic and the beauty goes, I don't think in the next 20 <laughs> years I'm going to look like a 70-year-old woman. I think I will oh, still look my 50. I think you will. So, and I, I will have will. all this CBD it's water. True. And I will yeah. have all. <laughs> no, I mean, no, seriously. No, you're going to be a more vibrant even than I'm going to be at 75 because it's it continues to get look better. Because look, look at all these people i mean you go to the party and i'm i'm looking at my mom she's 86 years old and sometimes when she go to the dance floor and i'm looking at her it goes are you serious yeah, right. because i know the age but some people come well, to me and goes wow you have a very Rad, wide Rad just met my wife for the first time at a party she doesn't go out and do these things with me too often i took her someplace she didn't admit that she was his wife yeah well yeah she <laughs> never does she was like, like they, they were dating <laughs> but so for uh, how many years? Uh, 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 yeah, thirty day? some years. Yeah. So uh, you, I, you, you can Cute. you can flatter her or not flatter well, her. Well, when but I met you, when I met you her, wouldn't. I apologized that she had to deal with him. But you know. <laughs> when you met her, did you think immediately, oh, she's older than Paul? No, and 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 it's funny because. I don't know. She that looks I, much younger than no, I no, do. Yeah, She's much more oh, oh, yeah, oh, I, I, yeah, I got oh, gray yeah, and yeah, everything. No, you, you, were, you were the wallflower. <laughs> yeah, but, because these things, no. you yeah. do a lot of things to but, yourself. But, but, do you do yoga. You, your exactly. muscle is toner than 30 year old woman. She's in so. good shape. She looks sharp. Her, her, you her, really her. are as old as you feel. And more importantly, you are really as old as you allow yourself to get stuck mm -hmm. in that mindset. Yeah, if right. you don't, you're ageless. You really are. I mean, yes, physical realities and. You know, but I mean, if you if you are a person that's working out, okay, twice a week, and you're doing kind of you know low you know free weights, and you're 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 doing stuff of that nature, your bones, your density, all that stuff is okay. Yes, your knees are going to hurt, but I'll tell you something: they will hurt a lot more if you weren't doing that. But if that is part of your lifestyle, but Rod, then not you're going to last longer. I mean, I'm just talking per from personal experience. Can I give you I another ugly anymore. example? You get the knee replacement. You get the hip oh, yeah. replacement. But I'm not, not, but, I'm, but I'm not even talking <laughs> right. about that. That's that in my mind is not necessarily yeah, a lifestyle right. choice. That is a necessity because you have no other way to sustain what your lifestyle is. And can I give However, you another ugly you know, reality? There's a lot of people out there, and I yeah. see them at the gym. Okay, that basically you look at them and their muscle tone. 
and their physicality has nothing to do with their age. No, that's not, that's, that's their, mi their mindset has nothing no, to do with the number that they're It's all about your mindset. So yeah. let me give you another ugly that's example. I saw uh, somebody I was friendly with. I wasn't, we weren't friends, so I hadn't seen him in a long time. Uh, and he, he had retired, and of course he was telling me how wonderful retirement is. And I looked at him, we were about the same age. And I looked at him and I like, I don't want to be you. You look like you're 20 years older than I am. Oh. You've aged by not doing anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow. yes. you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're assuming mm -hmm. the role of mm -hmm. an old person. Yeah. You look That's old. True. You act old because you're no longer. And this was somebody who was very active and very mm -hmm. successful. So much so that he thinks now, I don't have to work anymore because i got enough money to last yeah. my rest no. of my life. He needs to work. Yeah. But right now, how, how old do you feel? Well, look how I'm dressed. I'm no, dressed yeah. like I'm 30 40? or something. Yeah, third okay. 40. Yeah, oh, probably 40. Yeah. No, no, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's it's actually very common to ask because I've done this. I've done it for a while. Like, and it's funny, funny because people, I think, in their mind, get stuck in their 30s. And unless they that's have where I am forever. Unless, I'm always um, in my 30s. Unless they yeah. have some some sort of maybe 40, but reminder yeah. constantly of physical limitations or something right. like that. And even then, in some cases, you have people that have been. Uh, saddled with physical limitation for many years, even maybe from their 30s, and that doesn't shape them either. So th 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 this thing, which is basically the premise of this show today, is you know this this changing nature of getting older, the changing definition of getting older, how people perceive themselves as they are aging. Okay, is not how it has been. Sure. It's not how yeah. we have been told we should think about it, and it affects everything including how you provide support That's and why care. I don't even believe that people should start thinking about retirement at age 65. I mean, 65 is just a government's number. Like, basically, give you some freebies, like when you go to the right. restaurant, you know, you Can get I tell you the truth? The I, I don't years. ever want to retire. I want to rewire, but I don't want to retire. If you ever, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's a word that's being used no more than retirement. But, you know, if you have a passion to do something, Yeah. Why would you ever stop doing right. it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's you don't why see people Supreme want it to Court, control. You don't see Supreme Court justices quitting at 70 or 80. I mean, they're going into their 90s now here because why they still love doing it. Every show that I <laughs> well, do. I'm just saying there's an example. Of, in, in some cases, it's okay that you can, that wisdom is valued and, and you can continue well, in to work. In most, in most cultures, yeah. uh, other than Western cultures, and not even not all Western cultures, but in a lot of cultures, wisdom and age is actually revered. It Not is here. looked at in terms of being oh, repurposed. Yeah. I mean, even Native American culture, you know, there there was there was a sageness to aging, and there was a value to that person and what they basically now carried with them as a sum of their experiences mm -hmm. of having lived. Mm -hmm. And they didn't live until their seventies. I mean, mm -hmm. if if you if you start thinking about like what Paul was saying, he's sixty four years old. If we're talking about ninety two as an age for men, men to basically before the, you know before fasting. Paul, you've got at least half of the time period of, well, let's say half the time period of what you've already lived, right? Yeah. So you have, let's say 30 years, just for argument's sake, yeah, right? I let's, just say, let's just say 30 years. My dad lived to be in his mid-90s. Okay. So it's, it's not unusual to say somebody lived in their 90s anymore. It right. was like it's not My an unusual did, thing. Right. 103 is not an unusual thing anymore. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you have 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just regress you back. Mm -hmm. what, what did you achieve? In your first 30 years of life, how much did you achieve in your first 30 years of life? Quite a bit, I would venture. Yeah, I, I, I became And I think that probably I, I applies learned. for everybody in this room. Like, if you really take that amount of time that you still have left, and you look back at what you achieved in that time first time around, mm. without the benefit of the experience and the lessons learned along the way, that would expedite and speed up your ability to achieve, now you put that into play today. Mm. And you tell me how much you're going to achieve in the next 30 years if you allow yourself to think that way. Can I give you another example? It's we not have... a slowdown. It's not. It's it's bonus. It's bonus to apply what you have already learned on your own terms, right. pursuing something you have a passion for. I'll give you another strange example. We have a, another show on the network here called um, The Next Chapter, and it's a guy who has semi-retired and found himself bored out of his wits. He had the money to not, never work again. He was an executive coach. And he's found he needs to be active. He needs to do more than just volunteer and whatnot. He needs to find a purpose and a passion. Purpose-driven life. Yes. Exactly. And, and a productive life. life. 
And so he's found some ways to re-engineer himself and reimagine himself. And a lot of it through the, the experience of coming every week on the show like a reality show guy and saying, well, are you having the same trouble I am and exploring different things? And he said this, where do we get this notion that we're a tree, that at some point we've stopped growing? Mm -hmm. I'm done. I was a seed. I sprouted up. I fought to get this high, and then I've stopped. That's as big as I'm going to get. And from this point on, it's all just wilting and downhill. That's been our notion of aging for too long, rather than I keep growing and going until I can't anymore, until I reach a barrier. So, so with that being said, I think we're going to call it a day. Um, I do want to urge everybody to basically keep pushing the limits. Keep not accepting what terms are being used when it comes to about getting older finding purpose in life, okay, you are only as old as you feel, okay? And if you feel like you're in your 30s, guess what? You're 30. It, could be, it doesn't matter if your actual age is right. 80, 90, or whatever. Age is just a number. And, and Agnes just shared with, with, with you all that there is alternatives to how you choose to spend time, regardless of what age you're at, right. okay? Under, on your own terms, with independence, um, and, you know, if you got some extra time, Make sure to join us on the show. We're always going to try to push the limits here. Don't forget to say what you were going to tell us about. Who ah, yes, has, yes. Uh, well, well, uh, well. Yes, I would <laughs> like. I would like to take a moment of silence, please. And I would like to really, you know, sh send my condolences, deepest condolences, to the Mad Magazine family. <laughs> Because, yes, because, it's going right, out of right, right. Are you are you joining me in this, Paul? <laughs> I'm with you all the exactly, way. Exactly right. Okay. Mad Magazine uh, finally called it quits last week. <laughs> right? You guys and, didn't and grow Al up with Al it Alfred, like I did. E Alfred E. Newman oh. is retiring. No, oh. Alfred E. Newman basically bought the bullet, right? So Alfred, <laughs> Alfred E. Newman, I knew you, I knew you, I knew ye well, <laughs> and I appreciated the time that I spent with you all those years flipping through the pages of Mad Magazine. Okay. Where uh, else will I find where, the coupons where, for whoopee cushions? Where else, and can, for where else will I fold the back and... folder of the magazine to find out what the foldover is going to basically tell me? When That's can why I... I don't see any sadness from okay. your face today. Why I can't I be an adolescent anymore and tell fart jokes and so, tell goofy so, stuff? So, and... so, so, so I just, I just, I just wanted to take a moment of silence. Yes. Oh, and, and, I'm and, sad. And, and I want to thank my father for turning me on to Mad Magazine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Dad, all those Mad Magazine stuff that we bought in the most recent years, you know, the compilations, save those. They're going to be worth yeah. something yes. one day, right? Yeah. Right. Yes, and teeth. Yes, yeah. Sure. So you know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I feel, I feel like it's a real kick in the stomach, Paul, because you know, we used, we lost cracked. Yeah. And then we, and then we, that's not cracked, ladies and gentlemen. That's cracked magazine. It's a magazine, right? Mm -hmm. We, we lost National Lampoon. Yeah. And now we have lost Mad Magazine. So you know, Alfred E. Newman. You know, what we've done that. I'm not worrying. But we'll miss you. We've lost our youth. We've lost the ability to be young and goofy and adolescent again here, which is what all those publications are so, about. So don't ever stop being goofy and adolescent, Mad Magazine or otherwise. And if you want some help, join us on this show. <laughs> we'll take you on that journey every week. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. Welcome, everybody, to The Rad Life, the only talk radio show that takes you along with host and age explorer Rod Gontos on his continuing journey of discovery into life's challenges, opportunities, options, and all the latest and greatest things that come with getting older. The Rad Life is brought to you this week by Your Home for a Lifetime, a company dedicated to empowering you to stay safely, independently and comfortably in your own home. And now here is your host, Rad Gantos.